Welcome to Time Warner Cable's Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz, and we are joined by Christina Garcia. She is a member of the California State Assembly. Since I've known you, you've been working to focus upon political reform, campaign reform. You have a series of bills that have been proposed this cycle. I want to talk about a couple of them with you, if I may. You. I want to talk about government compensation. You made a name looking at the Bell scandal. Talk to me about the disclosure of government comp compensation, what you want to see happen. So during the Bell scandal, one of the things that came out was the uh, controller started a voluntary website where cities would submit what elected officials and staff members were earning. Uh, and so that's been voluntary. What this bill aims to do is that we actually get a better picture, a more complete holistic picture. So we're asking for total compensation and we're asking it to be mandatory, not just voluntary. And so what happens right now is that your salary as a council member might be put up there. You're earning $800 a month, but things like your stipends for a car allowance, which could range from $50 to $700 in some cities, things like your cell phone allowance, and there's a lot of other allowances. Or also, you could be getting paid for different agencies that are other sub-bodies of what the council does, and none of those things are included in there. Why is that important to you? Well, at the end of the day, I think we want to know that the whole premise here is that we want to know where our tax dollars are going, and then it's a relationship between the elected and the constituents that will decide you merit that type of a payment. You do merit. In some cities, these allowances and these stipends are taking what would be an $800 a month allowance and creating a $60,000 a year salary Which all of a may be fine, you would say, as yeah, long as the voters know. The voters know, and it's up to them to decide it's worth it. If you're in a working class community where, you know, you're only spending a couple of hours and your median income for that household is $30,000, I'm going to venture to say that the residents are not going to feel comfortable with you earning $60,000 for a part-time job. I also want to ask you about lobbyists. I mean, it is a relationship that exists. It's yeah. undeniable, and we can bash lobbyists, <clears> but they do provide valuable information at a certain level. They are advocates. But there is an interesting loophole in the law today about how much a lobbyist can give you unreported. And I think I want to start off by saying that, you know, I take my job really seriously. And being a politician has now been turned into a dirty word. My dad himself, the day after I won, said, oh, congratulations, you're not the scum of the barrel. And I was like, oh, that's just really yeah, sad. And that, so, yeah. you know, but it's, it just speaks to the work I have to do to say like that. We're not all like that. Most of us are actually good individuals. And so po politician, fundraising, lobbying, special interests, you know, they don't necessarily have to be bad words. They're advocating for a business, an entity in California, maybe individuals in California. And so I think it's a piece of having my constituents have the equal access to me, and they do, you know, and so I get to hear them out. But they do bring stuff. But what happens here is currently a lobbyist is not allowed to spend more than, more than $10 on me a month as a gift. So that might be a cup of coffee, uh, or he actually wants to give me a gift. He's mm. limited to $10. But there's a loophole, there's an inconsistency that I think we need to address. They could have a party at their house for me, spend up to $500 and not report it. And so, first of all, I feel there's an inconsistency. Why can't you buy me more than a coffee in a month, but you can have this party for me at your mm -hmm. house? I mean, whatever the premise is for that law, they need to be mm -hmm. matched up. So I, I felt either we eliminate the $10 cap or we, to match the $500 or vice versa. But given the environment of all the scandals we had and how easy it is in a house to kind of exceed that amount and then feel like, oh, it's okay, don't worry about it, right? It's part of hospitality, don't worry about what it costs. I mean, that's just human nature. So under the law that you proposed, though that money would be reportable or they'd have so to pay the campaign? So the campaign, the campaign's gonna pay the amount. They could still have the party, but it'd be a campaign expenditure. I see. Or an in-kind gift to the campaign. Uh, so the lobbyists can still choose to have a fundraiser for the person there, but it would bring sunshine because now you remember that previously up to $500 and you don't have to report anything. It brings sunshine and it's a campaign contribution going towards the limits that we already have. Her name is Christina Garcia. She is a member of the California State Assembly. My name is Brad Pomerantz. This is Time Warner Cable's Local Edition.